Do we all share a common ancestor? Well, scientists believe we do and men actually have two of them. They are known amongst geneticists as mitochondrial Eve and Y chromosomal Adam. And although they are named after the biblical figures of Adam and Eve, they don't have anything to do with the Bible. Instead, they represent the most recent common ancestors in the human gene pool for different parts of our genetic material. But who were these people and how long ago did they actually live? And it may surprise you that they didn't actually live at the same time and they weren't a couple. Now as a quick overview, Homo sapiens, our species, first appeared around 200 to 300,000 years ago in Africa. As Homo sapiens spread across the globe, populations intermingled and passed on their genes, resulting in the vast genetic diversity we observe today. This included interbreeding with different archaic forms of humans, such as the Neanderthals, which I covered in my last video. Despite this diversity, every living human shares a common genetic heritage, much of which can be traced back to specific individuals or populations through various forms of genetic analysis. The study of genetic common ancestors stems from an understanding that certain parts of our DNA are passed down relatively unchanged from generation to generation. Although your autosomal DNA, which is the bulk of your DNA, changes quite a lot between generations, which is why autosomal DNA tests are only accurate going back say 5 to 7 generations. Other small parts of your DNA have been relatively stable over time, with only very small mutations. These are of course Y chromosomes for men, which are passed down from fathers to sons, and mitochondrial DNA on the maternal side, which is passed from mothers to their children. Hence, tracing these parts of our DNA can give us a fascinating glimpse into our ancient past. And I do mean ancient. Let's start with mitochondrial Eve. She is named after the biblical figure and represents the most recent woman from whom all living humans inherit their mitochondrial DNA from. Mitochondria, the energy producing structures found in most cells, contain their own small set of DNA distinct from nuclear DNA that constitutes the bulk of our genetic material. Just to be clear, she was not the only woman alive at this time, nor does she represent the first woman. Instead, she simply represents the person whose maternal lineage survived through the generations, whereas the maternal lineage of other females eventually died out. Importantly, mitochondrial DNA does not recombine during reproduction like nuclear DNA. Instead, it is copied and passed down relatively unchanged from mother to offspring. This unique property allows scientists to trace maternal ancestry through the maternal line, generation after generation. By comparing mitochondrial DNA sequences among people from different parts of the world, scientists can identify shared mutations and estimate when the most recent common ancestor of all humans' mitochondrial DNA lived. So when did mitochondrial Eve live then? Well, she wasn't your grandmother, she's much older than that. Scientists estimate that she lived somewhere between 150,000 and 200,000 years ago, somewhere in Africa. Some scholars argue East Africa, whereas others argue Southern in Africa, perhaps around the Kalahari Desert. We do know that she lived around the time that the macrohaplogroup L split into two subclads, L1-6 and L0. Now you may be asking yourself why did her genetic lineage survive, whereas other women who lived at the same time, their genetic lineage didn't survive. Well, in general, genetic lineages, the survival of genetic lineages, is a product of chance to some degree. But population bottlenecks caused by cataclysmic events can have an impact on this. In general, over time, lineages can die out if individuals do not have children or if their descendants do not pass on certain genetic markers. As a result, the mitochondrial DNA of genetic Eve was passed down generation after generation, while the mitochondria of other women from her era was eventually lost. Yet population bottlenecks can contribute to this. These are massive episodes in human history where human populations have shrunk significantly, and this can drastically reduce the genetic diversity of the population. One of the most famous hypotheses involving a population bottleneck is the Toba Catastrophe Theory. According to this theory, a supervolcanic eruption of Mount Toba in Indonesia around 70,000 years ago caused a dramatic cooling of the Earth's climate, leading to a population bottleneck in the human population. The eruption is the largest known volcanic eruption in the past 2 million years, and one of the largest known explosive eruptions in Earth's history. It had a volcanic explosivity index of 8. For comparison, the 1980 eruption of Mount St. Helens in the US was 5 on that scale, which is often considered the most disastrous volcanic eruption in US history. Some estimates suggest that the human population may have been reduced to as few as 10,000 individuals because of Mount Toba. 
If this bottleneck occurred, it could have had a significant impact on the genetic diversity of modern humans, potentially contributing to the survival of specific lineages like those of mitochondrial Eve and Y chromosomal Adam. Today, every person alive carries a copy of mitochondrial DNA from genetic Eve, albeit with some mutations accumulated over the millennia. It is quite remarkable to think that the mitochondrial DNA that's in you right now can be traced back to an ancestor that potentially lived as long ago as 200,000 years. Quite remarkable indeed. But what about genetic Adam? Well, just as mitochondrial Eve represents the common maternal ancestor of all living humans, Y chromosomal Adam represents the most recent common ancestor on the paternal side. The Y chromosome is one of the two sex chromosomes in humans with men having one Y chromosome and one X chromosome, and women having two X chromosomes. Unlike other chromosomes, the Y chromosome is passed down exclusively from father to son, making it a useful tool for tracing paternal lineage. Similar to mitochondrial DNA, Y chromosomal DNA does not undergo recombination, allowing scientists to trace its inheritance back through the male line. But when did Y chromosomal Adam live then? Well, estimates of how long ago depend on the study but most place him between 200,000 and 300,000 years ago, around the time Homo sapiens evolved, and he seems to be slightly older than mitochondrial Eve. It was initially thought that he lived more recently than mitochondrial Eve, but this doesn't seem to be the case. He belonged to haplogroup A, and is associated with an ancient branch of this haplogroup that was discovered just in 2013, which was named haplogroup A00. Like mitochondrial Eve, Y chromosomal Adam was not the only man alive at that time, nor was he the first man or human. Rather, he is the individual whose Y chromosome has been passed down through an unbroken chain of male descendants, while the Y chromosomes of other men from this era have been lost to time. Now, you may be asking, as I did when I was researching this video, why didn't mitochondrial Eve and Y chromosomal Adam live at exactly the same time? You may have thought that they were a couple that had children together. Well, genetic lineages do not survive or disappear in perfect synchrony. In fact, it is quite possible and quite probable that Y chromosomal Adam lived tens of thousands of years before or after mitochondrial Eve, probably before. The survival of particular genetic lines is largely random, meaning that the two most recent common ancestors for these specific types of DNA could have lived at different times. Now, I should note that the most recent genealogical ancestor of all present-day people lived much more recently than the genetic Adam and Eve. A 2004 study published in Nature tried to model the most recent common ancestry of all living humans, which was defined as an individual who is a genealogical ancestor of all present-day people. What they argued is that from their models at least, the genealogies of all living humans overlap in remarkable ways much more recently than you may think. They argue that the most recent common ancestor of all present-day humans lived perhaps only just a few thousand years ago, somewhere between around 1400 BC and possibly as recently as 55 AD. I should also note as well that although mitochondrial and Y chromosome DNA are useful for understanding maternal and paternal lineages, they only represent a very small fraction of our overall genetic ancestry. Most of our DNA comes from the recombination of genetic material from both parents, which in turn comes from the same process from their parents. Down through generations, a lot of this DNA is lost to history through a number of generations and recombinations, which is something to go through in my video why you don't descend from all of your ancestors. But to find out more about this, please click here. Thanks for watching, please let me know your thoughts in the comments below, and I'll see you next time.